So now coming to the developmental defects, we have discussed the congenital defects. So developmental defects, they usually happen, there is interruption of development, like phocomelia or phalangia. So in this interruption of development, there can be a separation deficit, there can be a duplication of thing, there can be an overgrowth, there can be hyperplasia, there can be a constructive band syndrome, a band is formed, or there can be generalized skeletal anomalies. This we have already discussed few because this is superimposing on the previous slides. So now coming to how the spine is developed. So bone formation happens through somite cells, cartilage, and bone. Spine development, what happens? There is fusion of these arches, the fusion of arches to form the body, fusion of dens, and fusion of sacral segments happen. So these are the vertebrae. So anytime during this time, if it is not happening, then you will have these developmental defects. So in spinal defects, when we say aplasia, there is no development. Block vertebrae means there is two or more jointed vertebrae. We have butterfly vertebrae means there is dip in center of vertebral body. Border shifting means vertebrae taking on the appearance of adjacent vertebrae. Extra vertebrae means there is extra vertebrae are formed. Scoliosis, there is abnormal curvation of spine. Scoliosis is very common. When you get pregnant, then also there is abnormal curvation of spine, which gets rectified when you deliver a child. Spina bifida is one of the commonest problems in India in which there is incomplete development of these arches. There is spondylolysis, that is lumbar arches not attached to body, or there are twisted spinous processes when the spinous process is twisted to right or left. So now coming to some of the problems. So these are our developmental problems. Like you're having, like in the sternocleidomastoid muscle, there is some spasm or contracture. So this we treat, so we have a conservative treatment for first year and then we do a surgical release. These are all developmental defects. They are totally compatible with life. You don't need to abort the child. There is radial club hand partial or total absence of radius. In this also we do surgical reconstruction. Many times it is associated with cardiac or abdominal pathologies and hematologic diseases. If it is associated with so many problems, then usually it is not compatible with life. The child will die on its own. But if it is having it only individually or with two defects, then we can easily handle it. There is syndactyly partial. Then, then this, if we need a complex surgery for hands and we observe the foot also. So there is, if the problems with the hand, the fingers of the hand, you have to observe the foot fingers also, which is very important. Polydactyly means you have more, like more number of fingers are there. So we do surgery for both hands and feet. There is macrodactyly means they are more large in shape. They are due to vascular anomalies, neurofibromatosis. In this also, the patient need is a cosmetic problem. The patient will need reconstruction or amputation. We have cleft hand, cleft foot. So there is absence of central ray of hand or foot. In this also, we need reconstructive surgeries. Science has advanced so much, so we do all these reconstructive surgeries. This trigger finger, developmental frequently in thumb. So there is surgical release. We do the surgical release by the pulley. There is lower extremity, long bone deficiency. So in this also... There is now a lot of science has advanced, orthopedics has advanced. So they do the insertion and this is also totally compatible. The patient leads a normal life. This club food. So in that also there's conservative treatment, early diagnosis, and then we do corrective manipulation and serial casting. It's not that the child is born and you do the surgery immediately. So it is very important when you are intervening. There's vertical talus. In that also surgical correction we do in early ages. There's postural foot deformities. In that also surgery is done. Then other kind of syndromes like Holdoram, Polan syndrome, Down syndrome, Marfan, neurofibro. Down syndrome also the child is compatible. So the child will lead a normal life. But according to books, we can abort that child if we diagnose it before 20 years. Because that kind of child is very mentally not, uh, the mental age is not that of a normal individual. So they face many problems. Parents also face many problems. So coming to the prenatal diagnosis, how do we diagnose all these? So basically the methods of prenatal diagnosis are divided into invasive and non-invasive techniques. So coming to the non-invasive techniques, the non-invasive techniques, we are very particular because we have to perform it at a stipulated time period only. You cannot perform it any time during the pregnancy. It is very clear. So non-invasive, you do the maternal serum screen means you are taking blood from the mother. In the, that, you do a dual marker that is done between 11 to 13 weeks of gestation. Alpha fetoprotein is also seen to see neural tube defects in the child. We have got NIPS, NIPT. It is a very like a very good test that has come out of late five years back. It was launched and now it is used very rampantly. 
in that if you're doing a NIPT non-invasive prenatal test, its uh, sensitivity is very high and one might not require amniocentesis if you, NIPT has literally replaced amniocentesis and it diagnoses all the chromosomal defects. The triple test at 16 weeks, between 16 to 18 weeks, we do for Brown syndrome. Quadruple test is also done between like 17 to 19 weeks. It will also diagnose the chromosomal defects. Then we do the ultrasound level one at 11 to 13 weeks, the NTNB scan that we cause. NT means nuchal translucency and nasal bone because these are very important factors. If they are, if you see a nasal bone, it is normal and the child will not have a Down syndrome. Level two, 18 to 20 weeks, structural defects in many organs as CNS, heart, kidney and limbs. So that is the main scan, the level two scan that is done between 18 to 20 weeks. And that is the time frame. When we give the cutoff, Indian law gives the cutoff for abortions of these kind of babies. Now coming to the invasive test. Invasive test, we have chorionic villus sampling, CVS. It is done at 10 to 12 weeks. But in this, the chances are there. In this, what happens, the needle is put inside the woman's womb. And this, the CVS, the villus is taken out, extracted through this needle. It's pulled out. It is done under local. So it is local, is given on the abdominal wall and it is taken out. It is sent for sampling. So Many times there is a false negative also in this because that time the tissues developed are very less. So usually what we advise, we do the dual markers and the NIPT. And then if there is any problem, it's better to go for amniocentesis directly at 14 to 16 weeks. So that will diagnose all the chromosomal and metabolic abnormalities and DNA abnormalities. In the amniocentesis also, we put the needle inside the maternal womb and we take out the amniotic fluid and we send it for examination. So it is always done before 16 weeks because it is done. It is not done before 14 weeks because you will not have plenty of tissues. And tissues will not come. People DNA will not come into that area. So you need to do it between 14 and after 16 you are doing it because the reports takes to come around two to three weeks. If there is any lag, then the time frame of 20 weeks will go. So you will not be able to abort the child. So always maintain this thing. Otherwise, you will have you will be having a positive report. That is the patient, the womb, the fetus is having some problem. And then you will not be able to abort. You'll have to go to the court. So please do it at 16 weeks. Then we also do fetal blood sampling near term in RHI. So immunized babies and all fetal blood sampling is also done. Now fetal medicine has advanced a lot. So how do we do this prevention and diagnosis of birth defects? So how do we do? All types of birth defects cannot be anticipated or controlled as discussed already. But there are several things that couples can do to minimize the chances. Genetic counseling for those who have a history of birth defects in family, we can do. Prenatal tests can also determine whether or not a baby will be born with a birth defect. Ultrasound can help to determine problems with the baby's skeletal, circulatory or nervous systems. So there are congenital anomalies, treatment controversies about timing of treatment. Before the recognition of upper extremity, before walking, so it, 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 for the upper extremity problems, you have to treat it at the time of recognition. For the lower extremity problem, when the, when the fetus starts walking, then you have to do it before that. Plus, there are many reconstructive surgeries, deformity correction and extremity lengthening and amputations. Now coming to fetal therapy. So what all you can do in dry uterine? What we discussed previously was what we are doing after the delivery of the child. So now let's discuss what can anything be done when the baby is inside the womb. Yes, we can do. We do fetal transfusions for anemic fetuses in thalassemia or in RH isoimmunization. And it gives a good success rate because the baby is not born anemic and then you are able to save the child. Medical treatment of thyroid dysfunction or congenital adrenal hyperplasia of the fetus. If it is very severe, then it is done the medical treatment. Fetal surgery is possible due to advanced ultrasound and surgical procedures. For example, we can repair the hernia of the fetus or in case of hydrocaphilus also, the stem surgeries are done when the baby is intrauterine only. Nowadays, stem cell transplantation and gene therapy is, has also started and it is possible to transplant stem cells before 18 weeks of gestation of the fetus without rejection because the immunocompetence of the fetus doesn't develop yet. So it is very clear that please do this procedure before 18 weeks because that time immunocompetence has not developed because once that starts developing, so it will be the same as you're landing in trouble when you're doing the transplant of adults. So you have to then obviously suppress the fetus body that is not possible. This is done in cases of osteogenesis imperfecta and alpha thalassemia. Then twin to twin transfusion therapies are given. Fetal reduction is done in multiple, if you have got multiple fetuses, multiple gestation, also fetal reduction is there. 
or there is anomaly in one fetus and one fetus is normal, you want to keep the normal fetus, then also you can do the fetal reduction in which the KCL is directly put on in the other fetus heart, ultrasound guided. So it is also like, it is a safe procedure. Usually doesn't, uh, no problem happens to the patient and it is totally done in daycare center, in a daycare setup, no anesthesia is needed for that. So now coming to come some pictures. These are pictures of club foot. This is syndactyly before it and then after they have released it. So this is the spina bifida. You can see it is very common in India because there's a lot of patients. This is the amniotic band syndrome, what I was trying. So look, it is like this is like a mummy. It has been wrapped around. This is a clear clip palette. So now coming to what government is doing. So January has been considered as the National Birth Defect Prevention Month. And the World Birth Defect Day is March 3rd. So now, obviously, at a national and international level, everybody is doing much to this to prevent these kind of rainbow babies from coming because these babies were not delivered. We call them rainbow babies. Now the congenital heart defect awareness week has also started and it is between February 7 to 14. So these are totally dedicated months, weeks and days so that the awareness is spread and obviously then we have less amount of these kind of defects that we have to face. Thank you.